Hello everyone, my name is Harsh and today I'll be talking about CRD versioning. A little bit about me. I'm a developer at Sivo Cloud, which is a blazingly fast managed Kubernetes provider. I'm also a maintainer at OpenEBS, which is a CNCF sandbox storage project. I'm also a HashiCorp ambassador and I really love playing chess. So getting right into it, CRD versioning is a lot like any other API versioning uh, conventions. So you typically do not want to add a required field in the same version or change the name and types of the existing fields because that would break the end user specs. And the reasons for wanting to change names and types of the fields are to simplify user inputs to, for better validations or simply because you want to evolve uh, to the new API conventions. For example, uh, Kubernetes sub-resource status has evolved from using faces to using conditions. There are times when you don't really need to upgrade as well. And that's when you want to add optional fields as that wouldn't break the end user specs and uh, change validations. And by that, I mean uh, validations which don't break the existing defaults of the specs. So when it comes to CRD versioning, there are two views for it. As an end user, we always expose to the serve version. And serve versions can be more than one. Whereas the stored version is what's really stored uh, in etcd and it can only be one. So the API can read the stored version uh, from etcd and represent it in multiple versions to us. And we look at how it does that. But essentially, all you need to know is that stored version can always only be one. So when it comes to conversion strategy, there are two of them. The first one is really a last mile change uh, where you want to just bump up the API version and there are no schema changes in your uh, CRDs. The second one is what we really uh, think about when we think about conver uh, conversion strategy. And we look at uh, how it works. So uh, I have a little demo. And in this demo, I'll have two uh, versions, uh, v1 and v2. And in the beginning, v1 would be the stored version. And when user requests v2 uh, view of the object, what happens is the API reads the object from etcd in v1. It as a conversion webhook, which we have written, and I'll show that in a moment. Uh, but the conversion webhook would then throw back the object to API in v2, as it has some conversion functions. And the API then returns back uh, the output to the user. Now, what I've done is I've scaffolded uh, this project using Cube Builder. I even played along with the basic example of guestbook. All I've done is I've added this field full name in the v1 of the spec. And in v2 of the spec, I've added, uh, I've split the field into full name and last name, a uh, first name and last name. Other than that, what I've done is I've added this uh, cube builder marker, which I realized I'm on the wrong, wrong branch. So, let me switch up to v1 and i've added this uh, q builder marker which says that v1 is supposed to be the stored version and uh, other than that i have the conversion webhook in place and we look at what this uh, conversion package does in a moment but all i really want to show at this moment is uh, the conversion functions where i uh, read the fields, uh, make it into one field, and then assign the object metadata. And that's typically how uh, conversion would look like. And in case uh, you have uh, functions which lose data between versions, you'd want to store them into the annotations of the field uh, of the CR. And that's because uh, the versioning follows the concept of lossless conversion where you want the users to roll back to uh, the older version as well. Because 
when we introduce a new version, we set the old version as a stored version, as that would give time to the users to upgrade to the newer version. And that's the reason uh, we have assigned the v1 as, as the stored version, whilst v2 is not. And we'll look at that in CR and uh, CRD and hope it will make a lot more sense than me just saying words. So if you look at this, we have the v1 and it has served and storage as true and this is how you typically introduce a new version. You set the older version to be the stored version and the new version is just introduced and without adding any markers, it, by default it's, it's set as the serve version. So now. I'm going to create a simple example. So as an end user, I can create uh, right now objects in V1 and V2 and we'll do that. So in the V1, I have uh, a simple example, uh, guestbook sample and the f I have giving, I'm giving it the older field of full name as it is the V1 spec. and KSQ uh, alias for kubectl. So we've created this uh, example. Now let's try to view it. So we can see that uh, the object is written in v2 instead of v1 even though the stored version is v1 and that's because uh, clients like kubectl always prefer the newer version, higher version. So that's the reason we got back the object in v2 but if we really want to look at how the object looks in v1 we can still do that. So now you can see the object in V1. And this really encourages clients to start using V2 as they see the object in V2 always. And now uh, we look at what, what I meant previously by uh, the conversion, what the conversion package previously did. So uh, in the beginning, uh, when the conversion package wasn't there, we had to write conversion functions uh, between each of the uh, API, API versions and what that meant is suppose we had three uh, CRD versions v1, v2 and v3 uh, we had to write conversion function for converting v1 to v2 and v3 v2 to v1 and v3 and v3 to v1 and v2 and uh, that's like six conversion functions but with this hub and spoke model what we can do is we can have a centrally placed hub version and any any conversion that needs to happen it needs to happen via this hub version so in that previous example I spoke about uh, if v2 wants to convert itself to v3 it will first have to convert itself to v1 and then to v3 so it, it only means that you have to write uh, four conversion functions in this case because uh, v1 needs to convert itself to v2 and v3 and v2 and v3 convert themselves to v1. So for the next part, what we just seen was uh, the conversion uh, happening from v1 v2 to v2 but uh, there are existing objects like in the one I've just created it was created in v1. So we need to bump that up to v2 as well as, as that's a CR not a CRD. 
uh, and it's analogous to classes and objects in uh, object oriented programming. So in order to do that, there's this component known as storage version migrator, which does that for us. It probes the API discovery document every 10 minutes and looks at the new desired storage version and bumps up the existing objects to that version. Or you could manually just patch all the objects and edit the specs or something and uh, do it or have a custom program to do it. So I'm just going to do that right now. I'm going to switch up uh, to V2 and I'm going to install and in V2 what I've done is uh, I've just set the new V2 as the stored version. And I'll show you that. So as we can see, uh, V1 is still being served, but now the story is set to false. And V2 is storage version now. And Clients can now create objects in, still they can create objects in V1 and V2, but uh, in, in the end of the day, uh, objects inside uh, HCD would be stored in V2. And to check that, storage version migrator has the component known as, uh, has a CR known as storage version migration. And we can take a look at that. So as storage version migrations. And if I can find this book in here, did it. We can see that the status is succeeded. So this means that all, all the objects in our uh, in that CD are now migrated to V2. So now that we have done that, the next part, what we'll be doing is uh, since uh, all the objects have uh, been migrated to V2 and all the new objects will also be in V2 since that's the new stored version. Uh, we can now deprecate the. Uh, we can now deprecate V1. And in order to do that, what I've done is I've added this uh, marker. Answer version which basically set served equals uh, false. And we'll look at that in the CRD as well. Uh, and before I uh, jump ahead, I did forget to mention that uh, this file is also scaffolded using kubebuilder. And uh, in order to declare that v1 is the hub version, uh, I just had this one liner where I mentioned the type, uh, which is guestbook, uh, which is the v1, uh, v1 type of v1 of the object and hub is just a interface which we'll be uh, using in order for the conversion package to work so that we can do something like this. And now that we have installed, let's look at our CRD now. Did I not install it? Oh yeah, I have not installed it. Yeah, now let's view that. Yep, we can see that served as false and storage is false and uh, served and storage are true. Now what this means is that we can no longer view our objects uh, in V1 uh, and I'll show that. So by default we again get V2 as always a higher version is preferred but when we try to view it in V1 it just doesn't work which makes sense because now we have replicated the version. 
So we have followed this whole process of uh, deprecating a version where we introduced uh, the newer version to be served whilst the older version is still the storage version and then we set the new version to be the storage version and in the end we stop serving the old version. Now we can also proceed and uh, stop serving in the next release we can stop so uh, we can remove it from the CID itself and also drop the conversion by book support or if you choose to you can still keep it and uh, clients wouldn't have to have this intermediate uh, conversion uh, when you try to do releases. Uh, that's because of the hub and spoke model. So they can uh, directly convert from V1 to V3 instead of having to first upgrade to V2 and then to V3. I've provided all the references uh, and a lot of the scaffolding I've I'll document that inside the GitHub repo. And uh, it's basically what I followed from the Q Builder docs. Uh, other than that, there's uh, official documentation about CRD versioning in uh, Kubernetes docs. And there's the GitHub repo uh, for the demo. And uh, I've also linked the storage version migrator uh, component. And for non Kube Builder or Operator SDK projects, uh, which may, may not even use a controller runtime, uh, I have uh, provided an example uh, someone has already made of about how the conversion web book works in those older projects. You can reach out to me at Twitter, LinkedIn, Medium, or my email, and I'll be glad to uh, answer any questions or discuss anything more. Thank you.